Okay. 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 Good morning, Lord's Church. Where did you? Oh yeah, let me give you a chance to say it. Good morning, Lord's Good Church. Morning. Ah, it's so nice to see all of you here, at least to see part of you here. You're looking good. And we welcome those on Facebook and Zoom and YouTube. So we're delighted you're here. Um, really, I don't have any announcements this morning other than if you're on Zoom, you're supposed to shut off your video and your sound so it doesn't, we don't have feedback. So let's open with a word of prayer. Almighty God, we just thank you and are so appreciative of the opportunity of being able to come here on this morning and to worship you, to worship you, to honor you, and to just thank you for all those blessings you give us. And as someone has said, not only does our cup runneth over, but so does the saucer. So help us to keep that in mind uh, as we stand here on your holy ground guide and direct each one of us here this morning, open our hearts and minds to receive your message on this day. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> Thank you, Angie. What a blessing you are to us every Sunday morning. Uh, we have an offering basket in the foyer, and we ask that you um, leave your offerings there. We don't pass a basket anymore because of the coronavirus. And if there are those of you who are out of town, out of state, out of building, and you want to make a contribution, send it to Roy Stedman and it will be counted, and it will be given away. So bless you for that. Let's pray now. Father, we come to you humbly. We come to you often asking for forgiveness for those times that we failed you. Sometimes we knew we were failing you, and other times we were oblivious. But Father, we know in your great love and mercy, you love us so much. We are your children that you forgive us. What a blessing. May we never, ever take that for granted. And Father, the gift that you've given us of eternal life through your son, Jesus Christ, is over the top. And sometimes that news seems almost too good to be true. 
but it is. It is a scripture claims it and we proclaim it. Thank you, Father, for that. We know that there are many people in our community, in our families, in our friends who are suffering either illnesses or financial problems, emotional problems, physical problems. We lift these people up to you now as we name them audibly. Hear our prayers, O oh Lord, and answer these prayers according to your will. We just pray that you be with each one that we have mentioned and those we haven't mentioned who have a need of you. We pray for our church here, for churches everywhere. We pray for our leaders in our community, in the state, in the country, and in the world. May your divine intervention just um, be prevalent in all decisions that are made. And Father, now we pray as your son has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And us from all. For I miss the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now this morning we are blessed to have Greg Moses with us to bring us some of our music right now. Good morning. This little song's about how important prayer is. You ready? What a friend we have in Jesus. And griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often for. Take it to the Lord. 
my friends despise, forsake thee. Take it to the Lord in prayer. In his arms he'll take and shield thee. Thou will find the solace there. Thou Thank you so much, Greg. This morning's uh, scripture is from Matthew 18, 21 to 35, and the title of my sermon is Forgiveness in God. But before I read that scripture, I want to give you a little bit of background on what had been taking place. Jesus had been teaching his disciples for a few days before this event. And first of all, he was speaking about his upcoming death. And at that time, Peter said, Oh, no, that's not going to happen to you. Uh, Pastor Roy preached on this a couple weeks ago. And Jesus turned around and said to him, Satan, get away from me. I'm sure that cut Peter to the core. Anyhow, then there is the presence of Satan, evil, and demons. We're not preaching on that today, but they're all still alive and well. Then he took the three disciples, and Peter happened to be one of them, and went up to the mountain for the transfiguration. And they heard God's voice say to them that this is my beloved son. Listen to him. And later, Jesus said, you've got to have childlike faith, got to trust. He was very concerned about the least, the lost, and the, the very poor people of that day. His desire was that all of God's children be in God's kingdom. He also spoke about taxes, and he says, okay, you guys, come on, pay up those taxes like you're supposed to. And now we pick up the rest of the story. And this is on forgiveness. And that's a biggie. Most of my pastoral counseling revolves around forgiveness. Folks wanting to know how they could forget what someone did to them. They can't sleep at night. All they can do is think about it and think about it. How can they get even? How can they forget it? It's a huge concern for many of us here today. Now, Peter was concerned too. And the rabbis back then taught the folks that you were to forgive people three times. Okay. So Peter, with his superior attitude, comes to Jesus and he says, Lord, how many times should I forgive my brother when he sins against me? Seven times? Now, he's thinking he's getting brownie points. He's going above the three. Uh, yep, right into that one. So this is Jesus' answer to Peter. Then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother or sister who sins against me? Up to seven times? And Jesus said, I tell you, not seven times, but 77 times. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. As he began the settlement, a man who owed him 10,000 bags of gold was brought to him. And since he was not able to pay, the master ordered that he and his wife and his children and all that he had be sold for the debt. At this time, the servant fell on his knees before him. Be patient with me, he begged, and I will pay everything back. The servant's master took pity on him, and he canceled the debt and let him go. 
that was good news. But the servant didn't understand how forgiveness was to work. When the servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred silver coins. He grabbed him and began to choke him. Pay back what you owe me, he said. His fellow servant fell to his knees and begged him, be patient with me and I'll pay it back. But he refused. And instead, he went off and had the man thrown into prison until he could pay the debt. Now, when the other servants saw what had happened, they were outraged. And they went and they told their master everything that had happened. And then the master called the servant in. You wicked servant. I cancel all that debt of yours because you begged me. Shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow servant just as I had on you? In anger, his master handed him over to the jailers to be tortured until he could pay back all he owed. This is how my heavenly father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother or sister from the heart. These are the words of our Lord. Thanks be to God. How important is forgiveness to God? It's fair to say that forgiveness and grace have become the cornerstone to Christian theology. God is so gracious that God offers forgiveness, even when it's undeserved. All we have to do is show remorse, honest remorse. Not, I'm sorry, I did that and go out and do it again. That's a very radical concept of forgiveness. But how important is it to our faith that we forgive those who wrong us? It must be pretty important to God or else the Christian Bible wouldn't be so full of references to that effect. But it's not just the number of references to forgiving our neighbors. It's also what it says about forgiveness. Namely, that God expects it. He expects us to show the same kind of radical forgiveness that God shows. It's not an option on our part. It's not like you can negotiate that with God. It's not an option. It's a command and with consequences if we don't obey. Forgiving others is a hard concept for all of us. We, like Peter, feel that there have to be limits to our forgiveness. Pastor, you really don't know what he or she has done to me. You really don't understand. We can't just keep forgiving people because they would walk all over us. Some things that people do or say to us, are hard to forget because it hurts. It leaves a scar. And as a pastor, I get it. I understand that. Is hurting someone physically or emotionally ever intentional by another person? I think so. Yeah, I think so. Are there people who hurt other people unintentionally? Yes, some folks are just totally clueless. I'll give you an example, and I've probably shared this before, but you're going to hear it again. Growing up as a teenager, I had a close friend, Joan Evans. Her, her um, mother was Anna, and I spent a lot of time at their house, as she did at our house overnight, and all this kind of stuff. Had a wonderful relationship, and later on in our life, Joan went off someplace and Anna became more part of the church and the prayer so far as involved in. One day, Anna came up to me and she said, Joanne, that was my name, Joanne, I want you to know I forgive you. And I said, what? I want you to know that I forgive you. I have forgiven you. And I said, Anna, what on earth did I ever do to you? And she said, the night before graduation, high school graduation, which was like 10 years before this, her daughter confided in me she was going to run away and get married. And I never told the mother. 
she had harbored that all these years. You know, and a nutty teenager, it was very unintentional. Things happen unintentionally. People say stupid things. And sometimes they're emotionally unstable too, or just ignorant. And sometimes we are like Peter, we come to Jesus with a mathematical solution. Okay, I can forgive three times, maybe seven, and that will make Jesus happy. The rabbis, the rabbis said to forgive three times, but I'm willing to go seven. Oh, come on, Peter. Jesus forgave those who trespass against us. That's what he said we are to do. He did not offer us exceptions or limits or limits on what the sin might be. What does it mean when Jesus taught us to pray, forgive our sins as we forgive those who have sinned against us? Whatever Jesus included in the Lord's Prayer was elementary and very important. He meant for you to listen up. It becomes clear in the scripture that forgiveness is not an option, it's expected. If we don't show the same kind of forgiveness that Jesus has shown us, we're in trouble. The way it goes in Jesus' parable, the unforgiving servant who was forgiven his debt was thrown in jail when he didn't forgive his servant who indebted him. Not only thrown in jail, but he was to be tortured. And listen to this. Jesus says that will happen to us too if we don't forgive from our heart. This is one of those passages I just soon skip over. Jesus' message sounds radical to our ears, especially since he says torture. So I want to give a disclaimer. Listen up for this disclaimer. I want to make it 100% clear that we as a church, myself personally as a pastor, do not believe in torture or that it's legit. But when we look at ancient texts back in those days, 2,000 years ago, they believed in torture and they believed in slavery. We don't do that anymore. So sometimes pastors have to give this disclaimer and put the parable into the right context. So we believe that slavery and the use of torture is morally wrong in God's view. This wasn't clear to the people back then. That's what they understood from their culture of that day. I also want to make it clear that this parable can still teach us a point that it's extremely important to God that we show the same kind of grace and mercy we have received to others. If we don't, there will be consequences. What would they be? I don't know. But there will be consequences. Why on earth it is so important to God that we forgive others anyway? Why does he care? Maybe some folks don't deserve forgiveness. Why should we be the one who gets punished? We're the victims. That sin was against us. So here is my theory. I believe that God gives us commandments and requirements for our own good. To follow God's rules is good for us. God wants us to prosper and grow spiritually and not get hurt. There are many reasons why it makes sense for us to forgive others. And I'm going to mention two of them this morning. And as you'll see, they both show how we benefit from forgiving others. Forgiving others is for our own sake. Recently, I went up to visit my nephew near the villages. His mother, my sister, was dying. And Bobby was very, very angry with other family members. They had said negative things about him over the years which I never heard of. And he was ranting and raving and carrying on that after mom dies, never having anything to do with anybody, no memorial service and all this. He's going on and on and on. And I said, Bobby, I'm not aware of what you're talking about, but you know who you're hurting with all of this? And he's waiting for me to say, 
my family because I'm not going to have anything to do with them. But that's not what I said. I said, Bobby, you're hurting yourself. Your blood pressure probably just went off the charts. You're hurting yourself. And then I looked at his wife and I said, help him bring this into right perspective. This anger, this hurt. We need to forgive. Sometimes we forgive things that, like Anna Evans, I didn't even know I did, or something that's done intentionally or stupid or as a kid. But we can't go on with that kind of anger. I need to give you one other disclaimer. When I preached on forgiveness in my northern church, a woman came up to me afterwards and she said, how can I forgive my husband? He beats me up all the time. Am I supposed to keep forgiving him for what he does to me? I never said that. Please know that forgiveness has nothing to do with that kind of a problem. If you're in an abusive situation that's a crime, that is a crime, and you need to get away from it, you can and still should work on forgiving that person. But you should also get physically out of it and be safe. Okay, the first point I want to make about how forgiving others can benefit, it has, benefit us has to do with freedom. The act of forgiving can set us free from those chains that bind us to the offense and the offender. When we think about that over and over and over again, it does very negative things to us. Only after we gain this freedom can we receive healing from the hurt a person has inflicted on us. Only then will we be able to sleep through the night and be free from that sin of unforgiveness. This is what happens to us if we can't forgive. Instead of vanishing over time, the memory of the offense weighs on us and it grows heavier and heavier. I had an aunt who couldn't forgive another aunt for something she did years ago and she was always telling everyone how she couldn't stand that one aunt and that woman had been dead for 30 years i thought who was suffering from this my aunt continued to live in the chains of an unforgiving attitude what a downer for the people around her philip yancey once said he knew a rabbi who had immigrated to the united states and he said to philip yancey before I could come to the United States, I had to forgive Hitler. Why? I didn't want to bring Hitler with me to my new country. The second reason to forgive has to do with emotional health. You pay an emotional tax for an unforgiving attitude, which includes a huge amount of anger. Someone has said, that an unforgiving attitude is like carrying a red hot brick in your pocket with the intention of throwing it at the person who hurt you. But in the meantime, you get burned. You get burned by that red hot brick. An unforgiving attitude tires us, it burns us. It's like burning down your house to get rid of a rat. An unforgiving attitude is self-destruction emotionally. And we've learned today that it also creates physical problems for us. Not just emotional, it's physical too. And let me add a third reason for forgiving. Because Jesus said, when God asks us to forgive others, God does so only after we have received grace and mercy. And then God expects us to forgive for our sake so that we can free ourselves and heal from whatever wrongdoing or hurt or loss that was put on us. So this is my assignment for each one of you this week. Think about that person who has wronged you. Then think about the many ways you have wronged our Lord by not following his two commandments to love him with all your heart, soul, and mind, and your neighbor is yourself. And we all know that when we go to him and ask for forgiveness, we are forgiven unconditionally. 
We didn't and can't earn that gift of forgiveness, and we certainly do not deserve it. But I, our Savior offers his grace and mercy to all of us. Now go and do likewise to that person who has wronged you. Let us pray. Most holy and merciful Father, we confess to you and to one another and to the whole communion of saints in heaven and earth that we have sinned by our own fault in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and what we have left undone. We've not loved you with all our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors. We have not forgiven others as we have been forgiven. We've been deaf to your call to serve as Christ served us. Accept our repentance, Lord, for the wrong we have done and our blindness to the human need and suffering and our indifference to justice and cruelty. Restore us, good Lord, and let anger depart from us. Please hear our prayer. Your mercy is great. Amen. And now we will have Greg come back. The next song's a nice, interesting story. I hope you'll song join me with it. Okay. Go for it. dance they would not follow me i danced for the fishermen for james and john they came with me and the dance went on dance then wherever you may be i am the lord of the dance said he and i'll lead you all wherever you may be and i'll lead you all in the dance said he I danced on the Sabbath and I cured the lame. The holy people said it was a shame. They whipped and they stripped and they hung me on high. And then they left me on a cross to die. Dancing wherever you may be. I am the Lord of the dance, said he, and I'll lead you all. Wherever you may be, and I'll lead you all in the dance, said he. I danced on a Friday when the sky turned black. It's hard to dance with the devil on your back. They buried my body and they thought I'd gone. But I am the dance and will still go on. Dance then, wherever you may be. I am the Lord of the dance, said he, and I'll lead you all, wherever you may be, and I'll lead you all in the dance, said he. They cut me down and I leapt up high, I am the life that will never, never die, I live in you if you live in me, I am the Lord of the dance, said he. Wherever you may be, I am the Lord of the dance, said he, and I'll lead you all. Wherever you may be, and I'll lead you all in the dance, said he. <laughs> not That's not social. That wasn't social distancing. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Go sanitize yourself. <laughs> oh, I'm telling you, I just love that. If you listen to those words, you get 
gospel message from the get-go, the very beginning to the resurrection. It is a wonderful message. Thank you so much, Greg. Thank you for doing that. I don't know whose idea it was, but they know I love it. I love it. So may God bless each one of you this week as you go out. Open your heart and your mind, and if there is somebody that needs to be forgiven, do it. Do it. And may God's peace be with you. Amen. Amen. Now, we will stand and sing God is so good. And we will also remember that we're back again here next week on Zoom and Facebook and YouTube. So, Roy, would you lead us, please? God is so good. God is so good. God is so good. He's so good to me. He always forgives. He always forgives. He always be so good to me. Oh, she can see us. Amen. I, I,